and then we can we can start here. So tonight we're talking about developing characters for eternity because that's what we do. When we nurture a child's character or anybody's character, we are shaping a character, not just for now, but hopefully for eternity. And I wish I'd known this information when I was raising my children, because people in the church will tell you that a, an important part of parenting is developing your child's character. But actually no one really tells you quite how to do that. And I was really fortunate when I was living in Scotland for a while, I was involved in a project to help children develop their characters because it is so good for their mental health. And the material that had been prepared was by a Christian. And I learned so much and became so excited about it. And I'm really glad to share it with you because developing character is not something heavy and burdensome. It's something fun and enjoyable that you can do simply easily every day when you just know a few things. So, so what are character strengths? Let me just make sure I got that right. What are character strengths? Well, they are personal qualities that help us to flourish, that is to do well. And these qualities we can grow and develop all through our lives. They are positive ways of thinking, of talking, of doing, that energize us and help us. And when we have them, we have better health, a better life, better relationships. So these things are, are really helpful. They really build a strong core of resilience in our lives when we have character strengths. And when we develop them in our children, we make them stronger to face the complexity of life. Jennifer Fox Eads is the Christian lady who wrote the material from which I learned, and the reference is at the end of this and also in the handout. And I like how she describes character strengths. She says they are durable, that's long lasting, fundamental, that's basic qualities that describe us at our best. And I really like that they describe us at our best because I can think well, maybe I'm patient, you know, because I like to sew things carefully and I can take my time over things. I can be really patient with crying babies and hold them for hours. And then I think, oh no, I remember that time when my husband, who was a pastor, uh, kept me waiting for a long time after church. And I was sitting in the car, hungry and, and miserable. Maybe I'm not so patient. Or the time that I was in the, the queue, the security queue in the airports, um, feels like that was a decade ago now, but those times when you're in the airport, there is a long queue, you're in a hurry for your plane and someone in front of you has not put their bottles and their liquids in the special plastic bag and you have to wait. Maybe I'm not so patient after all, but Jennifer says, it describes me at my best. What am I capable of in the best possible moment when I've had a good rest and a, and a good dinner and I am really functioning well? What can I do then? And that describes who we really are. Okay, our character strengths are tested in difficult times. We grow them in difficult times. But what we can show when we're at our best shows what we have actually grown into. Peter talks about this in his uh, in, in uh, Second Peter, and he uses these verses to describe really the process of character development. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter describes actually several character strengths that we will talk about later in these few verses. And he talks about adding one to another and possessing them in increasing measure. 
to stop us from being ineffective and unproductive in the journey of our faith. And that's the important thing. There are many different character strengths and we grow them over time um, and keep adding to them. And that's how we develop our Christ-like characters. So character strengths, they enrich our lives. They help us to be respected. The more character strengths we have, the more people will respect us and respect our children if they have them. They also help us to be respectful because when we have character strengths, we show respect and care and love for others. They help us to learn well and to work well. And the more character strengths a child has, the easier they will find it to learn at school and the better we will work with our colleagues. And it helps us to make positive and caring contributions to our communities, have better relationships, live happier lives and share God's love with the world. When we have character strengths, we are the light in the world that actually shows the world the character of God. Now, if we were here together, I would ask you to get into groups and make a list of God's character qualities. But just think of them for yourself right now. Think of them, just two or three, of the characteristics of God that come to your mind. There are so many dimensions of God's character. Um, many words that, many character strengths that God has that we don't have words for and that we're probably not even aware of right now. We will take an eternity to discover God's character. But there are some that we know are there. And it's good for us to pause and make a list of what we think God's character is like. There was a study that was done um, all around the world. And the researchers went to every culture they could and asked them, which of these character strengths from this list do you value the most? And when they did this, they found something very interesting. They found there were 24 key character strengths that are valued in most of the world's cultures, common across the world. And they arranged them into a periodic table of character strengths. You can see this online and download it for yourself if you like. So these are the character strengths, these 24 that are valued around the whole world. And actually, I believe that these are character strengths, dimensions of God's character, which are still in us um, as his, we are made in his image with his character strengths, with the potential for all of these and more. And we grow them slowly through our lives. We have all of them, but some of them might be quite low in the growth chart at the moment. Um, I'm not so great on bravery. And so that's probably about a five out of a hundred in my life, but I'm, I'm better at creativity. So that's a bit higher. And so we have the potential for all of these and we can keep adding to them as Peter says and growing them through our lives. So we're going to look at some of these character strengths and in the previous chart, they were divided into, into sections, different ones that have different kind of group qualities. So the first list is wisdom and there's creativity, which I was quite surprised at, curiosity, a love of learning and perspective, being able to see the bigger picture and take different perspectives on a situation. So let's look at these to begin with. Creativity. We are God's handiwork. We are created by God to do good works, to do creative things because we are made in his image and we have creativity too. And creativity is a very valued ability and, and character strength at the moment. Because when children are making things out of toilet rolls and glitter and glue and they're just playing and making things. They are actually learning to solve problems. They see what doesn't work. They try something else and they learn how to adapt something to get an end result that they want. And it is this skill that is helping people to solve the world's problems. People who can try different things, have creative ideas so they can develop a vaccine or solve a problem or create a new machine or a new possibility. And so creativity is, is actually quite highly valued. Then there's curiosity. 
It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and to search out a matter is the glory of kings. So each one of these, I try to think of a person in the Bible that, was, that had this character strength, um, like creativity. There were the people that God inspired to make the beautiful things for the tabernacle. They had creativity. Actually, even Mary putting baby Jesus in a manger was creativity. She had a problem. Where was she going to put the baby? And she had a creative response. Let's put him in the manger. It's full of soft hay. Then curiosity. Um, that's wondering about things, wanting to find things out, wanting to learn, trying things out and seeing how they work. A love of learning. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Solomon loved to, to learn more because he wanted to add to his wisdom and learning, wanting to learn and learning how to love learning is important for all of us throughout our whole lives because we never stop learning. Then there's perspective. And this is being able to see things from different angles, see things from a different viewpoint, see things from God's viewpoint even. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then there are the character strengths that are the courage strengths. These are the ones that are a bit more challenging for me. I'm not a particularly brave person and I would never jump across that gap on those rocks. But these character strengths take courage, bravery, perseverance, sticking at something even when it's hard. Being honest can take courage. And courage can come out in a positive way when someone is enthusiastic. Bravery. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua was brave. Daniel, Esther, many people in the Bible were incredibly brave. And we can go to those stories and learn how they were brave, how God helped them to be brave, and what happened when they were courageous. Then perseverance. Blessed is the one who stood the test. That person will receive the crown of life. There are many people in the Bible who persevered. And someone who actually often goes a bit undernoticed is Noah. I just imagine building this huge boat for all those years uh, and just waiting and waiting for the rain and thinking what perseverance it took to keep building, keep preaching. But there are many people who persevered. Moses persevered as well. I can't imagine being 80 and leading all those wild and disorganized, disobedient people through the desert for 40 years. There are many who persevered. We can learn from them. Honesty, speaking the truth in love. So it's good to be honest, but we need to speak the truth with love so that we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. So we need to help our children have the courage to be honest. And we do that by, when they do tell the truth, responding in love to the truth that they tell and not punishing them for telling the truth because then they will learn not to tell it. So we need to be very careful how we handle our children's truth telling. Enthusiasm. I was surprised this was a character strength but then when I've worked with people who are not enthusiastic, I realized how important it is. So whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, working for the Lord and not for human beings. Then there are the humanity character strengths of love, kindness, and social intelligence. Kindness, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And if there's one character strength that I would um, should focus on nurturing in every child, it's kindness, because it encompasses many of the others in different ways. And we can think of the people in the Bible who were kind. And something I noticed when I was preparing a sermon on kindness is that Dorcas was kind and made clothes for people. The widow of Zarephath was kind and fed a stranger. Then there's Mary and Martha, and they, they fed all of Jesus' disciples, which was quite a task. And then there was the Shunammite woman who was concerned for Elisha. 
and she houses him, builds a little room on her house to shelter him. And what I realized was that all of these women had a resurrection. So Dorcas was resurrected herself, Mary and Martha's brother was resurrected, and the sons of the widow of Zarephath and the Shunammite woman were also resurrected back to life. And that tells me just how wonderful God um, views kindness, that he will give these people who do simple kindnesses a resurrection of their loved one. Then there's love. Love one another as I have loved you. You must love one another. And we have many stories in the Bible of people loving one another. Social intelligence. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. So social intelligence is being aware of other people, making sure people are not left out, taking concern for everybody's needs and doing what is best for the group, these sorts of things. And they're good to develop in our children. Then there are the justice strengths, social responsibility, teamwork, fairness, leadership. These help to create just communities, just societies. Social responsibility is carry, carrying each other's burdens so we can fulfill the law of Christ. And there's many people in the Bible who came along and helped each other. And I particularly think of Simon of Cyrene who carried the cross for Jesus, carried his burden. But there were many other things they, like Dorcas making clothes for poor people. That was her social responsibility. She filled their need for clothing. She carried that burden for them and gave them clothing. So we see there are different people in the Bible who had this social responsibility. Abigail as well, when she, she um, her husband was very foolish and upset David and his men and Abigail stepped in and she did something to take care of um, David's, um, David's men and feed them. And that was a beautiful story. Teamwork, see how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Well, there was teamwork in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, in, um, in building the tabernacle, in building Noah's Ark, in feeding the 5,000. There are many times when we see teamwork in the Bible and we need to help our children be good team members so they can cooperate with people and work well. Then there is fairness. So we do not show favoritism. And in fairness, we see that the, um, the apostles in the New Testament, the, there were some elders taking care of the widows and the Greek widows felt left out. And so they made sure there were special people allocated to care for them. So no one was left out and no one went hungry. So fairness is, is really important. Leadership but you're not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. So Jesus says, don't be like worldly leaders, be servant leaders. And that's the leadership we are called to and the leadership we need to generate in our children, this desire to, to serve those that we lead. Then there are the temperance character strengths. Um, which, re which require um, holding back in some way or giving in some way. So forgiveness um, takes, takes courage and temperaments. We need to manage our emotions, manage ourselves well to forgive other people who have hurt us. How do we do that in a kind and respectful and generous way? So be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And that's an important trait to develop in our children. Then humility, that is not letting other, not um, telling others how great we are, but letting others exalt us and saying, oh, she's so good at this, or he's really good at that, rather than saying that ourselves. And wisdom, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Caution. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity. Understand what the Lord's will is. And caution is important because you can be brave, but if you're brave without caution, 
you can do something really stupid and hurt yourself or other people. So it's important that our children also learn caution or prudence, which is a, a, an old fashioned word used for that, where they, they learn to think carefully about what they're doing, assess the risk and not do something quick and stupid. So in the Bible, there was a group of people that were very cautious that helped other people to be cautious. And we would call them probably the prophets um, who spoke words of caution to the, to the lives of the children of Israel. Self-control, the fruit of the spirit is all these things and self-control. And that's a, a challenging one to develop in children enabling them to wait for the what they want and not want to have what they want straight away, but to be patient and wait and be self-controlled. And if they want something in the shop, say, well, let's see, let's wait a month and see if you still want it. Quite often, they won't want it in a month's time, they'll have something else. And you can again tell them, let's wait a month and see what you really want. So encouraging children to wait, to have self-control, to let others choose the piece first, to take the smallest, that's a good skill to develop. And then there are some character strengths called transcendence, which is a big word. Don't really know quite how to explain that. So I just hope you understand. Appreciation of beauty is a character strength. And I was surprised by this one but then I thought, what if God did not appreciate beauty? What if architects or people who make clothes or anything for our world did not appreciate beauty? What would it look like? Um, I'm so thankful there is still so much that's so beautiful in our world. And David appreciated beauty. He wrote so many Psalms describing the beauty of God's creation. And we can help our children to appreciate beauty by having them slow down and really looking carefully at insects, at creatures, at plants, taking the leaves that have fallen off the trees, making a, a rubbing with paper and a wax crayon so they can see all the veins in the leaf and appreciate the detail in it. It's very good and healthy for us all to, to slow down and take time to appreciate the beauty of God's creation. Gratitude is a character strength. And that also surprised me. I just thought it was something we chose to do, but it's also a character strength. When we have an attitude of gratitude, of thankfulness, then it's a blessing to us and to other people. The more thankful we are to others, the less they will have an argument with us. Every time we show gratitude to someone, we become happier and so do they. The research has shown that Gratitude makes us happier. And gratitude also reduces anxiety, which is really important to remember in these challenging times. So if someone is anxious, anxiety and gratitude, the brain can't do them both at the same time. So if we focus on what we want to thank God for, then the anxiety will disappear. Gratitude is for all the things God has given us. Anxiety is concerned that I will not have enough of this or this or this, or this might happen, but it might not. And so gratitude can, can help to soothe the mind that is full of anxiety. So gratitude is a, a lovely character strength too that we can nurture easily in our children. We also need hope and optimism. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. We always need to have something to look forward to. The younger the child, the shorter the time must be that they need to look forward to something positive and happy. And so it's important to make sure that families, children always have something they're going to do this week that they're looking forward to, uh, whatever it is, try and give them little bits of hope um, every day to do things they can look forward to at the end of the day, at the end of the week um, to keep them positive. <clears throat> humor cheerful heart is good medicine so being able to laugh out loud to have it having a good laugh with each other and not at each other is very positive it's really good when we can share something simple and funny 
watch a video of a funny animal, see a funny cartoon, tell each other something funny someone else said today. Um, we share a house with a young adult who's come to live with us and um, she loves humor. So she's always sharing humor with us and we have a lot of laughs with her and she makes us slow down at the end of the day and, and play a game together. So we enjoy these times with her. She brings extra humor into our home and it's so healthy. And spirituality. Interestingly, every culture around the world valued spirituality. And this verse sums up spirituality to me, to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And so we can develop this also in our children um, through their lives, through our family worship and, and help them to develop this important character strength of spirituality. So there's a lightning tour to 24 character strengths that are valued around the whole world. And as I said, I feel like they are aspects of God's character, which are somehow inside all of us that we still around the world value these core values and character strengths. Character strengths are really important because the more we have, the better we will cope with life's difficulties. We'll have more resources. So the character strengths, they're like tools in a toolbox and when something in your house breaks down, if you only have a hammer, oh well, there's a limited amount of things that you can fix with just a hammer. But if you have a hammer and a spanner and a bunch of other stuff that's in a toolbox that I don't know the name for, um, but if you have more tools in there, then you'll have more resources to help you cope with the different things that go wrong in your house. You can tell I leave that to Bernie, my husband. But you can imagine character strengths are your toolbox for life. No one can take them away from you. You carry them with you, inside you, and they can get stronger through your life. And that is so powerful. I do some work um, supervising people who work with refugees. And uh, it's really interesting. I help them to find the character strengths in these young people who have fled their countries and feel like they have nothing, but they have their character strengths, the resilience that has enabled them to get to our country. And so by helping them to see what is in their toolbox, rather than all the things they don't have now, we can help them to be resilient. And these character strengths help us to be resilient and bounce back emotionally when all kinds of things happen in our life. We know through this pandemic that some people have flourished and done well and um, their relationships have got better, they are happier, they are healthier and other people have not done so well in these times for all sorts of reasons. But those who have done well probably have got more character strengths that have been grown in their life, developed further and they can become more resilient in these times of crisis. I wonder what your character strengths are. If I were to ask you to list three of your character strengths, what would you say? Now I can imagine that right now, most of you uh, are using your character strength of humility and you're going like, oh, I don't really know. Maybe I, um, I can't really think which ones I have. And I would tell you, if you struggle, Think what someone who loves you would say that you have. If they were to describe you to me and I asked them what your character was like, what would they say to me? And those could be your character strengths. So think about what someone else would say about you, what your child, your spouse, your friend, your parent, your boss would say about you. And then think of a time when you used that strength recently. You can reflect on this later but it's really important that we think about our character strengths. Like I said earlier, we really have all 24, but some of them are fairly, well, they're just baby ones and some can be quite strong. And we have a range because it's very rare that someone will have a high level of all 24 character strengths. And so we're growing them bit by bit throughout our lives. And we just do what we can to nurture them in ourselves and in those around us. 
So think of a time when you use that strength because we need to stop and see, what am I using here? Which character strength did I use today? Or how many of them did I use? Because we're not used to thinking of like that. But we need to start thinking like that so that we know what our character strengths are and which ones we need to work on and which ones we are using in different settings and how to recognize them in other people so we can nurture them in their life and nurture them in our children. So here's the list again. Creativity, curiosity, love of learning, perspective, bravery, perseverance, honesty, enthusiasm, love, kindness, social intelligence, social responsibility, teamwork, fairness, leadership, forgiveness, humility, caution, self-control, appreciating beauty, gratitude, hope, humor, and spirituality. Just to remind you again what they are so you can think of which three at least you might have or which three you think might be your strongest. At the end, I will share a website that has a quiz where you can find out what your character strengths are that was involved in this research as well. So you can identify that if you're perhaps not sure what you have. I want you to think what happened if sometime in your life someone noticed your character strength. What difference did it make to you when someone noticed and nurtured one of your positive qualities? How did this encourage you and how has it shaped your life since then? Well, I was about seven and I was at school and I made something. I forget what it was, but it's one of those times when you make something out of um, recycled material and um, boxes and yogurt pots and foil and glitter and glue and feathers. I don't know what, but I made something. And someone came to me, I don't know who now, maybe my teacher, and she said, Karen, that's really creative. And I wasn't really sure what creative meant, so I asked, and she said, well, you've done something different to everybody else. You've made it work differently and look differently and um, you've done something unusual. And she said, that's what creativity is. It's like doing something different and thinking about how it can be different and better or unusual. And I thought, I like that. I want to be creative, that sounds nice. So the next time I was making something at school and I was putting things together, I thought, how can I be creative? And the teacher had given us a card to make for our mothers and everyone had the same card and the same um, cut out flowers and you just stuck them on the front of the card. And I thought, that's not very creative. I want to be creative. So I found a way to make my flowers more three-dimensional and do something different with them. And my card looked different to everybody else's. It probably wasn't that great, but it was different. And I kept nurturing that creativity. I liked to write. And when I wrote, I would try to be more creative. And I've nurtured that all through my life. And now I've written, I don't know, five or six books about creative aspects of worship and things. But I don't know that I would have developed my creativity if someone hadn't said, when I was a child, that's really creative. And I got excited about that. When we notice a child's character strength and we nurture it and they get excited about it, we shape their lives differently, positively. The first thing we need to do when we're nurturing a child's character is to know what these different character strengths are. Of course, there are many more than 24. Some of them fit actually under the others, like generosity may fit under kindness or social responsibility, depending on what kind of generosity it is. But we need to be aware of at least these 24 character strengths and help children to know what they are, to recognize them in themselves and others and let them know every time we can when we see them use a character strength.
tell them that was kind, you made a good choice, that was really courageous. And um, how did you do that? What helped you to be courageous? So when we um, tell them what we have seen and tell them that that was a good thing and we're, we're excited and happy that they made that choice, then they will flourish. They want to do that. They, again, they want to please us. They see it as a good thing. And a lot of the time our children are doing really good things and we are just not noticing it or we're just not commenting on it and they don't realize how good it is. So we need to let them know this is a powerful way to shape a child's character. And every time you're with a child, if you can say one thing that you are noticing that they are doing well, then it will help them to flourish and grow stronger. So we can also nurture a child's character by explaining what some of the character strengths are that they can understand. Some of them are a bit complex and a bit adult, but there are some that they might like to work on. Help them choose which ones they're going to work on and make a list of ways they can practice that strength. How are they going to be kind today? How are they going to be a bit more courageous today? How are they going to find something to laugh about today and find something funny to share with other people in a positive way. You also might wonder with them in family worship, when did Jesus use this character strength? You know, because even Jesus told stories that were kind of funny, but we don't really realize how funny they are in our culture, but Jesus also used humor. So we can think about the times that Jesus uses character strength, talk about those. We can, um, Think about the Bible characters who showed that strength, learn about them. We can make a list of Bible verses about the strength that they can learn in creative ways. And these verses will come to their mind and encourage them when they need to make a choice about what to do. They will remember the character strengths and what you say when they do something well, they will remember the Bible verses. And we can also find autobiographies and stories of people today or through history who use that character strength. It's quite important to find some stories from today to show children that these things are still really valued today. Then you can again make a list of ways to exercise the character strength within your family, work on your strengths together as a family or a class and make posters to encourage each other to use that strength and to, to remember to, to be kind every day or do something. So we can use the children's um, artwork and their ideas to help reinforce the, the lessons about their character. We can also notice when people show character strengths in real life, in the books they bring home from school, in the news stories, in TV programs, in the movies, pretty much whatever story is ongoing, there are people who are demonstrating good character strengths and those that are not demonstrating good character strengths that are showing the opposite. And we need to help our children notice the difference. What happens? How is life different for those who are using their character strengths in this story, in this movie, and those that are not? Let's unpack them and explore them. And particularly the news, TV, movies, that's a great way to start talking about them with teenagers and older children. At the end of each day, invite your child to list three character strengths they have used that day. Or if every day is too much, do it maybe on a Friday night or a Sabbath and say, what character strengths have you particularly used this week? And they might tell you, well, I did this and this and this, and they will learn. They will learn how to identify them, to practice them. They'll be more aware of them. And then also tell them the strengths that you have seen them use too, which they didn't notice or didn't mention, because that is so powerful. When they see we are noticing them using their character strengths and they haven't even noticed, that is powerful. You know, even if you just notice a child's character strength once in a while, maybe your life is busy, but I know I can identify four or five times in my childhood 
where I can really remember someone saying something that nurtured a character strength in me. And those messages have stayed in my head, in my mind, shaping how I behave even today. So these words are blessings. They are powerful because they help shape our children and their characters towards eternity. But it's not just children. We are all on this journey. And we need to do this for each other in the community of Christ to reach out and nurture each other and spot the character strengths. Say, hey, that was really kind. That was really courageous. That was really persevering. You know, you've been practicing the piano for such a long time that's taken perseverance. So recognize them. Maybe just drop a quick text to a teenager or young person, just a few words. Hey, I appreciated that. That was cool. Say it in the way they will appreciate it. But the more we do this, the more we will help each other grow more like Christ, because it is so powerful when someone notices our character and reinforces it in some way. This is a beautiful piece of inspiration from Ellen White. Every act of life, however unimportant, has its influence in forming the character. Every act of life, even the tiny things we do, even the tiny things our children do, have an influence in forming the character. And just like this sculptor with his tiny strokes, just tiny little pats of whatever he uses to, to shape the clay, is shaping an amazing character, bit by bit by bit, painstaking work, but slowly out of the clay, this amazing shape emerges. A good character is more precious than worldly possessions. And the work of forming it is the noblest in which men and women and children can engage. So when we are developing our character, when we are developing the character of other people, it is the noblest work we can do because we are shaping these characters for eternity. And that's an incredible um, piece of wonderful work with God to help shape each other to become the people he wants us to become, to become more like him. So I wonder from what I've shared today, um, some very simple ideas. We just have these 24 or more character strengths. You can add more to your list. Simple ways to notice them, to reinforce them. Why it's so important to do that. Why we can, uh, it's important to practice them and how we can help our children to embed them into their lives and build their resilience and grow their character. And I want you to think about yourself. What one thing will you do to nurture your character from what you've learned today? And what one thing at least will you do to nurture a child's character in your life? Because that is the noblest work in which we can be involved. Here are some useful resources. We have a handout to share, which covers um, a number of these character strengths, not all of them. And then the practical ways of growing character in a child's life, that list is in the handout. And also some useful resources, the ones here are also in the handout. So the book is Celebrating Strengths, by Jennifer Fox Eads. And it's really applied to a primary school, but I learned so much out of it from her approach that I've now made into this, this seminar. There are a hundred kids activities to build character at momentsaday.com. And a site that I particularly like is called Let It Ripple. This is an amazing website of character resources created by a Jewish group. And they created this periodic table of the elements that I shared at the beginning. And you can click on all the character strengths and get masses of resources to help you. Videos and ideas, different research about those character strengths, loads of information connected to that website. It's very powerful. They've even made some of their own movies to reinforce the ideas of developing character. They also create materials every year for character week for every age from tiny children to adults. So you can use those resources as well to help you. 
It's the richest website I found of character resources. And I like that it's been created by a Jewish community that values the values that we have as well. Then there is viacharacter.org, the, the website at the bottom is where you can go and you can fill out a questionnaire. There is one for adults and one for younger, I think maybe teenagers and older children where they can identify their character strengths. So if you're not sure what yours are, you can go along there and have a look and see, and see how you re rate um, next to other people and their character. So before we um, go into a question time, I would just like to close with a prayer here, and then we can share some questions and some discussion. You can share your ideas, um, ask more. But this is recorded so you can see it again if you wish, and then hopefully the handout will also help you. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to praise you for who you are. Your character is amazing and we cannot begin to understand it all. It is so rich. And here we just have 24 character strengths, which we can see are in your character as well and that we want to grow for ourselves so we can become more like you and that we want to nurture in our children so they can also grow to be more like you. Give us wisdom, give us patience, give us insight so that we can do this beautiful work with you of nurturing characters because this is the noblest thing we can do on earth is to shape a character for eternity. Thank you that you are with us helping us with this important work because you will love us and you notice our strengths and you want to grow us too. So encourage us, I pray through Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for sharing. I also saw the result. Um, am I right, Karen?